This is Rosie. She's our A2A2 Jersey cow we bought the first year we moved to Kentucky. It was obvious she was mistreated by her last owners, but we didn't realize the extent of the damage that had been done. She had scabs all over her body, her coat was extremely pale, and she was skinny as can be. The lack of care most likely affected her health and resulted in an aborted calf. We were devastated, but we were determined to get Rosie healthy and ready to calve again the next year. By giving her consistent forage, free choice minerals, and a great environment, she improved. Her coat was looking darker, she put on weight, and her wounds healed. So here we are today, weeks away from calving. We were losing sleep, stressing over potentially losing another calf, and hoping we did all the right things to prepare her for a healthy pregnancy and birth. We went and picked up a bunch of straw because Rosie is getting very, very close to calving. She's probably got another week or two until she's got a calf on the ground, but we wanna make sure this calf has a nice warm, dry area to lay down and sleep at night. Rosie's looking real big. Calf sits on this side, on her right side, and her udder is actually starting to fill up pretty good, so that's telling me that we're getting close. Starting to see some veins. That confetti. Party, Rosie. Right before the new year, we built this area for our cows to be in. We built a little cattle feeder so we could just roll up their hay right there. But you can see there's some pretty big gaps. Like it keeps, it keeps cows in really well, grown cows, but it's not gonna keep this calf in. So if that calf wants to get out, it'll probably have a pretty easy time of getting through those gaps. So we, we have a bunch of cattle panels, hog panels and stuff that we have laying around. And we're gonna go ahead and put those up against there and secure them so that way the calf can't get out too easy. Thankfully, if the calf does get out, she's not gonna go very far she's gonna stay real close to her mother right there which is Rosie so well like I said we still have a couple weeks until Rosie has her calf we're hoping on a heifer she's been laying in the corner for a while and been breathing really really hard but she's also huge so you know, if you eat too much, you start breathing hard too. So we're not too sure if that means she's gonna be calving soon, but you can bet we're gonna be checking on her quite a bit and I might even get up in the middle of the night and check on her a couple times too. She is quite large. <laughs> Rosie practically raised this cow. We have an old video when we first got Buddy and he was a young calf and he was still drinking milk from her, but she was starting to dry up so we had to bottle feed him. Buddy, our Angus bull is very gentle, but we didn't want to take any chances with this calf so we decided to separate him. I came to check on Rosie. And I saw some feet. Whew. I did not want to miss this. Oh, it's okay, lady. So glad. You can see I'm filming it on two things. I'm so glad I caught this. I've been checking like crazy lately. Push, Rosie, push.
Rosie was having a hard time pushing and getting past the calf's head, so after about 20 minutes of this, I decided to jump in and help. All right, lady. Just like that, we had a calf on the ground. It's amazing seeing just how far Rosie has come since she came to our homestead. I could tell she was having kind of a hard time pushing, so I decided to give her some assistance and pull. It definitely helped her a little bit. I'm pretty sure it's a bull calf, but I didn't get a very close look. Oftentimes, when a cow loses a calf, she is sold at auction or turned into beef, but we promise not to give up on Rosie. Good girl, Rosie. It's amazing what stress and poor care can do to an animal. After spending all this time caring for Rosie, we are just so thankful she has the opportunity to be a mother to a healthy calf. I can't tell you how much of a relief this is after losing her calf last time. I'm not too sure there's anything more beautiful about having a homestead than that. Rosie has come a very long way from when we first got her. Just incredible. That's an amazing thing right there. I'm a little at loss for words with all of it just because how upsetting it was last time when we lost her calf and just how much sleep I've lost over this calf. I, I just, I don't know. It's crazy that it's here now and I'm so thankful that it's breathing and it's alive. It hasn't stood up yet, but it's been trying to. I'm almost certain it's a boy. I checked a second once it hit the ground, but I don't know, it was kind of quick, so it's hard to tell, but either way, they're both healthy and happy. Rosie's being a great mom, cleaning up her calf, and Buddy's over there on the other side of the fence. I'm not sure he knows what to make of it. We separated them because we were a little worried, you know, maybe Buddy would be kind of mean to the calf, or, you know, I, I have no idea. 
we didn't want to have any chances with that but we also wanted to separate him because we don't want him to breed with rosie because next year we're going to do a later calving we don't want to calve you know in february or march we're going to calve hopefully in april or may where it's a little bit warmer and she's out on grass i think it's a little bit more natural so he'll be separated from her until probably late june early july rosie had this calf just in time because we had some really cold weather the last couple days and we're about to hit 70, I think 72 degrees here in the next couple days. So this calf's gonna have a nice warm environment right out of the womb. Yep, we got a bull calf. We were hoping for a heifer, but honestly, we were just hoping for a good healthy baby and a good healthy pregnancy. And so we're happy with that. That's a cute little guy for sure. Two more legs. Two more legs. Oh, you almost had it. looking at
sir. The little guy's been trying to latch on and I think he might have got it. Rosie's calf is doing great this morning. It's the morning after and he's up and walking around. I think he's already had some milk. I had to get her a fresh bale and also wanted to kind of close up those holes so that way he couldn't get through. Let's go see what he's up to. I think he's laying down in the corner and Rosie's distracted with the hay. She's real nice. I can go up and pet him. I can be right around him and she doesn't bother me. She has a lot of trust with me, so. Hey little buddy. Okay. Give me a whiff. Yeah, yeah, buddy. I think he's gonna go over and get some milk from mom. He's a bit nervous, but he's definitely curious. I love how Rosie just kind of talks to him and it's pretty cute. Coming over, buddy? I pulled you out of there. You better like me. He's definitely curious. And so is Prince, but Rosie doesn't like Prince. Prince, go! Get out of here! Well, the calf's doing pretty good. He's up and walking. I've seen him poop, so that's good news. And I've seen him milk quite a few times, so that's, uh, that's good, too. Now that we've got a very, very adorable calf on the ground, it is almost time to milk Rosie. We're gonna wait about a week. We're gonna leave them. He's gonna have all the milk and the colostrum and all those good vitamins and minerals and that milk for him. And then we're gonna start milking, which means that we need to start building a milk stanchion. This is our winter barn. This is where they're at in the winter time. There's gonna be a period of time where we're gonna be milking them in the barn. We are gonna be building a milk stanchion and a milking parlor out in the field where they're gonna be for the majority of the year. That's the next big project. For now, we need to build a milk stanchion in this winter barn. Let's get to it.
So how this head gate works is we'll probably leave one in place bolted in. So both pieces are bolted at the bottom with uh, nuts and washers on that side. And this one will be our pivot one. And so this one will most likely just stay in place, but we do have multiple holes at the top if we wanna, if we wanna pull that out and move it over another hole. She'll walk in, we'll obviously have alfalfa. We're gonna build a little box here. She'll have alfalfa right there that she can go and munch on. And once she puts her head in, we will go ahead and pull this pin. It's a little hard to do this with one hand. And then we'll slide this over. Not too sure which hole is gonna be best for her, but we have three different options. And then that way it locks her head in on the other side and she can't just pull on out once she wants to. Pretty simple head gate. We actually had this, just this portion, the head gate portion in our little tiny, what we call our garage now, uh, before when we first got Rosie, but we didn't milk her for more than like maybe a day, if that. So it uh, didn't get much use, but it's gonna get plenty of use now. This right here is pure alfalfa hay. A lot of people with milk cows, they'll either feed grain, but for us, we are grass fed. We're not doing any grain in any of our cows diets. And so we need to feed them grass. And a lot of times with a milk cow, you'll see people doing alfalfa pellets. And that's great. That's what we were planning on doing. But honestly, this is cheaper. You can buy a 50 or 60 pound bale of pure alfalfa for at least where we're from for second cutting about $10, third cutting 12 and fourth cutting usually about $13, which this is fourth cutting. We got the best stuff we could. That's cheaper than buying alfalfa pellets. So if you go buy alfalfa pellets at the tractor supply near you, you're probably looking about 18, 19 and depending on where you are in the country, probably even more than that. But this is what is gonna be her little treat when we are milking her in our milk stanchion and they go absolutely crazy over it. And the pigs actually love this stuff too. And of course, we still feed our regular hay during our typical feeding time, which is always, we always have hay for our cows, but they have all their round bales and we put those up to the fence there so she can reach her head in. And with Buddy, we've just been throwing it over the fence since he's been separated lately. I'm sure we're probably gonna need more hay as the year goes on. We got about 22 bales, so that'll start us out pretty good. We've got our milking stanchion. We are all ready to milk Rosie in about a week. We got all of our hay today. And Rosie's bag is looking really big. We are gonna leave her in the calf alone for seven days. I think we've got about five days left in there until we're gonna milk her for the first time. So tune in for our first milking video. But Rosie is looking huge. The calf's doing good. He's trying to stay warm. It's a bit chilly today, but it should warm up over the next week for him. We are so thankful we had a healthy calf. We didn't have any issues with Rosie. So far, so good. I don't know if we're in the free and clear yet, but so far, so good. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.